Hey guys, welcome into the Wells Tech Garage for this week's episode of Counterpoint. Today, we're going to be talking about something that's been troublesome for quite a while on GM vehicles, and that is their drive-by-wire throttle actuated control module or drive-by-wire throttle actuated uh, throttle body assembly. Whatever you happen to want to call it, I'm sure many of us have already play, replaced multiple of these units. Um, for a while there, it was slap a whole unit on. Now, there is a TSB to replace the throttle position sensor that mounts on the side of the throttle body assembly. That TSB not only covers the 2007 Chevy Equinox that I have in here right now with a 3.4 liter, but it also covers 10 other models with varying years between 2009 and 2011, and it's mostly on the V6, but it all comes down to the same problem. There is a difference between the two sensors that are mounted inside of here is essentially what's happening. The, it was addressed by GM, and because of that, there is now a new sensor that is available. So what I'm gonna do today, guys, is I'm just gonna walk through this TSB and show you guys how to replace this, uh, this sensor right here. So, first off the bat, there is a caution, handle electronic throttle components carefully, do not drop or immerse in any of the electrical throttle components in any cleaning or solvent of any type. Don't drop this thing, it's an electronic component, we don't need to be throwing it around, it can ruin the, uh, ruin the, the gearing as well as the electronics inside, and don't put this in your parts washer, okay? We are going to have to clean the throttle body, but you're not going to want to do it throwing it in your parts washer or your... Uh, parts cleaning, cleaning tank, anything like that. Okay, so vehicle comes in, common problem, right? P2135 uh, comes up on the dash saying reduced power mode, the customer's complaining that the vehicle won't accelerate, it could be an intermittent problem that you key cycle it and it typically will drive good again until it recognizes the fault and puts it back into reduced power mode. Very, very common complaint on these vehicles. Could come up as a current code or a history code in the system. Now, Let's go through this TSB here. And for reference, guys, the TSB number is 12060400003A, and it's dated March 24th of 2014 for, uh, for this revision, and it's talking about reduced power mode and that P2135 being set. Okay, so first of all, you have to take the throttle body off. Now, I've already done that. I have it here in my hand and I took a short snippet of a video here of me taking it off. So let's check this out. So first of all here you can see that I'm disconnecting the throttle body connector. GM uses locking tabs similar to Chrysler and their red tab. GMs are a little bit different. You just take a screwdriver and you pry it in there and all this is doing is locking the connector into place so that it can't mistakenly be unplugged. So once you get that little gray tab off of there then you can push down on the black button and you can pull that connector right off. It comes off really nicely. So now it's time to grab the screwdriver and take the air inlet snorkel off and disconnect the breather hose and disconnect the mass airflow sensor, but it doesn't come off nice and easy because it turns out there's actually a locking tab on that one as well. I'll show you how to get to that in just a second. Okay, I pulled off the tabs for the air box and it's time to loosen it up on the throttle body here, pull it off of there, and flip the whole air box over, and you can see right there is that locking tab, just like the, uh, just like the throttle body uh, plug was. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect that off of the mass airflow, and unplug it and get it right out of the way. So now you can see our throttle body is bolted up. We got two bolts on there and uh, two studs with nuts on them and a coolant line on the bottom there that is in front of the throttle body. So after some, some hard work here, get all these nuts and bolts taken off. And I'm working really fast today. I had that energy drink again. So I'll get all these bolts out of here. But you'll see as I take this last one out that this thing is still not able to come off because we still have two studs mounted on there. I'm not able to pull the throttle body off because that coolant piping right there is in the way and I can't pull it out of the way without separating it from its brackets or disconnecting the hose. So I have an inverted Torx socket. This is like just like a Torx except it's the opposite. And I'm going to go ahead and throw that on there and pull both of these studs out of the throttle body. This will allow me to not have to mess with the coolant hoses or piping at all 
I'll be able to pull the throttle body off very, very easily. So we'll get that last stud out of there and should be able to just pull our throttle body up out of the way. There we go. Didn't have to mess with that coolant piping at all. I didn't have to open up the cooling system at all. So saved, saved some time that way for sure. And as you can see there, I'm not able to pull it far enough to get it off. And there's the throttle body. And there we go. And you can see it's pretty, uh, pretty dirty inside there. Now if we look at the camera overhead here, you can see on the front side it looks pretty clean unless we look right down in here. You can see some carbon buildup right inside of here. But if we flip it over on the intake manifold side, you guys can tell just how much carbon is built up inside of this throttle body. So TSB talks about opening the hood, removing the throttle body, remove any loose debris from inside the throttle body assembly, and inspect the throttle body for damage. Okay, well, I don't see any damage. This thing looks like it's in, in good shape. So the next step is to clean the throttle body bore and throttle plate using a clean shop towel and GM top engine cleaner or upper engine and fuel injection cleaner. I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna use a trusty can of brake clean and a rag. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw on my safety glasses here and let's clean up this throttle body. So spray some brake clean on a rag. You could use carburetor cleaner, um, any sort of cleaner that you have, uh, have sitting around. And we're just gonna start wiping this thing down and try and get all that buildup of the carbon off of, off of here on the throttle plate as well as the bore of the throttle body. Okay, as you can see, much cleaner. Oh, we got a little bit on the plate here yet. Get that cleaned off. And there we go, you can tell much cleaner inside. There's always gonna probably be a little bit around where the, where the throttle body is anchored on either side be really hard to clean out. If I had a toothbrush or something, I'd get this a lot cleaner. So throttle body is now clean. You want to take a pick and pick this gasket out because you want to replace this gasket um, whenever you have the throttle body apart. So go ahead and pull the, pull the gasket out and, and replace it and then just clean up the mounting surface with a rag and you're good to go. Okay, so throttle body is clean. So, notice here guys, before cleaning this guy up, take these off, before cleaning up the throttle body, it says here do not mount the throttle body in a vise. The throttle body can be on the set, can be set on top of a soft protected workbench area. So again, they don't want you clamping this thing in anything, they don't want you dropping it. You want to be very, very careful. So next, they want you to hold the throttle body upright because it's time to pull this, this sensor off and we gotta have a nifty super high-tech tool here to make sure that we don't mess it up. So that's just good old, uh, good old rubber band to hold the sensor in place as we're pulling the uh, clips off of here, okay? So that's, that is in the TSB and they don't want this, uh, they don't want this sensor flying off of here, sensor assembly flying off of here while you're trying to get these clips off because they can be kind of a, a bear to get off. So, all right. Do not pry on the machine sealing surface of the throttle body inlet duct. So don't pry on any of these surfaces here where this is machined and it has to seal. You don't want to go prying against there. But now it is time to start taking off these clips. So I got a, just a little straight pick. And these clips do sometimes go flying. So I'm going to try not to send them Send them flying, that's why I put my safety glasses back on here. All right, there's one. And again, it did say in the procedure to make sure that it is in an upright position, um, like this. I find it easier to lay it down as I'm pulling these clips off than trying to work like this and potentially stab myself in the, in the finger. That would not feel good. There 
there goes one flying. And now the last clip. Get this one pulled off. All right, there we go. All the clips are off of here. So hold the throttle body with your hands so the throttle position sensor is facing upward. Remove the rubber band securing the throttle position cover. Grasp the throttle position cover and carefully lift it straight up and separate it from the throttle body. And in the picture here, you guys can see that they're holding it open as they remove this. So wide open throttle holding it open. Let's pull the rubber band off the top. Take a look at what we have inside of here. All right, a little bit of wiggling to get this thing off. And there we go. So here's our throttle position cover. As you guys can see, it is going to look exactly like our new one as soon as I show you that. And here is inside of here we have a gear. And as you can see as I move the throttle, I'm moving the throttle plate right now, our gears are moving. And um, when I took this off, if you look inside of here in this brass colored part right here, there's a little, little hole in the center there. That is actually where the sensor is connecting right to, uh, right to this point right here. So as our throttle plate turns, it's going to turn the sensor element inside of here, okay? So now what we want to do is we want to inspect this gear for any sort of damage. Make sure that there's no teeth that are chipped. This gear is very, very sensitive and it's plastic, okay? So you don't want this thing falling out. You don't want to drop it. You want to make sure that it's in perfect shape. Also, it is a two-stepped gear. The outer, outer ring right here is on this piece here, which is the motor. This is the actuator motor right here. That's going to push this piece, which then has a lower gear set that's connected to this, okay? So we want to make sure that that stays perfectly in place there. All right. So our next step, do not allow the intermediate gear to fall out. This is our intermediate gear. Don't let it fall out. You don't want that to, uh, to happen. It could damage it. Okay, maintain throttle body in an upright position. Use your thumb to maintain contact with this. Make sure it doesn't fall out again. If the, <laughs> if the intermediate gear does fall out and hits the hard surface, it could damage it. All right, so now we're supposed to inspect this cover. Make sure that it still has a gasket attached, and it does. And then also we need to make sure that both of the female terminals are still inside of the cover. So right inside of here, you'll see there's two female terminals that mount up with these two male terminals right here next to the motor. They are perfectly in place. That is your power and ground for the, the motor that drives it right there. All right, so we're going to observe that, and that looks good. We're good to go with that. So now it is time to remove the new throttle position sensor from its protective shipping wrapper. So I got um, new clips and our new sensor, which I'm not going to drop or anything like that. And it did come in a nice bubble wrapped, uh, nice bubble wrap bag. Okay, so we're going to remove the new sensor, and we are going to place the throttle position sensor cover in the position as shown. So we're going to hold it just like this, and we need to inspect where that sensor alignment is right here. Okay, according to the picture, it's supposed to be about halfway in between, hold it here, halfway in between here. And it might probably be hard for you guys to see, but it does not look like it's halfway. It looks like I need to adjust it first so that when we line all this up, the sensor is lined up with the throttle body and wide open throttle. So I'm gonna take a screwdriver, and hopefully this one is small enough, and I'm going to turn our sensor until I'm about halfway between this mark and this mark. That looks pretty good. There we go. You guys can see we're about at that halfway mark now. So now when I flip this thing over and install it onto here, it should fit right in place. Make sure it's orientated properly. All right, that all looks good. Now it's talking about making sure that all three of the alignment tabs are present. So on this cover, it might be hard to see, but there's a tab here, here, and here that are used to align it perfectly onto this thing because it's got to sit in an exact spot. These sensors are super, super picky, but if you think about it, you want it picky, right? It's a throttle control, okay? So we want it picky. So, all right, now it wants me to make sure that the gear is fully seated, not moving around and it is on both of the gears. Looks good. So again, 
Rotate the throttle body to the wide open position. I'm holding it wide open. I'm gonna hold this in place so you guys can see. We're wide open throttle right now, I'm holding it. And it is time to go ahead and install our new sensor. So I'm gonna flip this over and it should go on pretty nicely. And just like so, make sure that everything is sitting nicely here. Make sure that's tight against the aluminum before we, oh, we'll get my head out of the camera. Before we go uh, putting the clips on, let's make sure that it's tight against our aluminum right here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let go of my throttle body. And it looks good. It looks like it's seated nice and tight. I didn't have to force it on. It kind of just fell on on its own. Don't force it because that must mean that your uh, position sensor inside of here, this, uh, this right here, is not lined up with the geared piece inside of the throttle body housing, okay? And then in the picture here, it shows me installing this clip first. Let me go ahead and open these up. And get our new clips, and it shows to install this one first. Now there's probably a reason for this. I don't know what it is, but if they're telling you to do it this way, it's for a reason. Probably just like any time you torque down anything, you want it to go in a certain order, right? And it looks like I might not be all the way on here because I cannot get this clip to go in place. Let's take another look at this. Okay, squeeze it together. Let's see if we can get this thing in. All right, it is definitely not going together properly. Let's take a peek at it. Okay, so now our, our uh, pin is right here, and it looks like it's lined up. So it looks like everything was lined up properly. And again, it does fit on here very, very nicely. I don't think we're having a pin alignment problem. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. So these clips are very hard to get on, I guess. I guess it is right where it's supposed to be. It's just a pain to, uh, pain to install. Okay, everything still looks good. Now, there is an order of putting these on. Just like when you do a timing cover, a valve cover, anything like that, uh, valve body, there is an order of installing this. So it looks like number two, let's put the old clips over there. Number two is gonna be right here next to the connector. go. Number two is on. All right. Number three is going to be over here, right next to number one. There we go. So this is a very, very tight fit, guys. Number four is going to be right next to number three. Alrighty, and number five. So it looks like we're just making the way around, our way around now. Number five is gonna be right next to that. There we go. And number six, last but not least. So there is an order to this. If you guys are looking for the order, it is right in the, uh, right in the TSB procedure. Okay, so there we go. Our new sensor is installed 
and the throttle body opens. I don't feel anything in there that feels weird. It feels exactly like it did before. So these are all clipped in all the way. Looks good. Okay. Install a new throttle body gasket. Install the throttle body bolts and nuts and finger tight the fasteners. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this over to the vehicle and I'm gonna install it right onto the intake manifold where it belongs and I'm only gonna install everything finger tight for now. Plug in the connector and then I'm gonna boot up the scan tool and verify that our parameters either agree or disagree. So once I do all that, they're gonna say agree I'm going to bring it open to wide open throttle, make sure they say agree the entire time. That means my sensor is operating correctly and that we fix the problem. At that point, you torque, down the, uh, torque the bolts down to factory spec and then you need to perform the vehicle learn procedure. Okay. So last step, after you get the whole thing installed, I'm not going to go through it because you guys watched it uninstall. It's the same way to reinstall it. Um, but the learn procedure is important. So you got to do a throttle learn procedure. And that is, I'll bring up the steps here, start the engine in park, allow it to idle for three minutes, okay? With a scan tool, monitor, monitor desired and actual RPM. So do you really need a scan tool for this part? Probably not. If we're only monitoring RPM desired and actual, all it's doing is just giving us something to look at while we're sitting there for three minutes. Uh, it says here the ECM will start to learn the new idle cells and desired RPM should start to decrease. Then after those three minutes of idle and park, you're gonna shut the key off, completely ignition off for 60 seconds. Then start up and idle the engine in park for another three minutes. After the three minute runtime, the engine should be idling normal. If, it's, if the idle speed has not been learned yet, it'll need to be driven at speeds of at least 44 miles per hour with several decelerations and extended idles. After the drive cycle has been completed, the engine should be idling back to normal. And once the engine, has engine speed has returned to normal, that's when you're going to go ahead and clear out your DTCs and everything should be good to go. So it is possible to do the throttle learn procedure without a scan tool. The scan tool is only to monitor the actual and desired RPM. So in all reality, if you're a do-it-yourself or at home in your driveway or something, you don't really need a scan tool to do this job. If you can pull your codes or have a, your local parts store pull your codes, you come up with a 2135. Follow this step-by-step -step procedure that we just went through. Um, if you'd like the TSB, I'm sure you can go out there and search. Just type it in Google, 12060403A. You should be able to pull up that uh, technical service bulletin from GM and follow step-by-step -step in instructions. Otherwise, just follow what I just did. It wasn't that bad. We just did it in, in real time, had some struggles with the, uh, with the clips, but everything seems to be working just fine. So, all right, I think that's gonna be about it for today, guys. That is GM's throttle body, electronic throttle body or throttle actuated controller. Super, super, super common for problems, giving you that reduced power light, um, putting the vehicle into limp-in mode, setting that 2135 code. So, replace the um, sensor assembly here. Replace this guy first. Again, if this does not fix it, that is when you would then install an entire throttle body. But GM wants you to replace this first, okay? So that is part of their TSB and that is how to properly fix the 2135 code on your late 2000s uh, GM motor. All right, so thanks for watching today, guys. Really appreciate it. If you like what you see, please give us the thumbs up. Subscribe, share the video, tell your friends about it. We're also out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Check us out on those. And uh, until next time, guys, we'll, we'll see you then. Thank you.